Greetings everyone, this is Anton with uh, update number two of my virtual weapon experiments with my correctly pronounced Vive headset. I um, thought I would catch you guys up on what I've been playing with the past week. As you can see it looks a little fancier around here. I've actually decided to put some textures on the environment, mainly for performance testing reasons. So, where to start? Well, first off, you can see my hands look a good deal different. As some of you mentioned last week, when you just have the, uh, the Vive controllers in view, they look kind of like weird robot hands. Um, but I think that having their shape, their exact shape visible, is pretty useful, especially for multi-hand objects so you don't click them together. So basically what I did was I, I cut out the silhouette out of the model of the, of the controller, and gave it a sort of semi-transparent rimlet look. So both has a has a cool holographic feel to it, but more importantly, it sort of visually disappears um, once you've been once you've had it for a while, while still giving you an idea of where your hands are. Next up, um, I've started playing around with some UX for the existing objects. So things like when you actually hover over an object. It lets you know that you can press and hold, say, the grip button to pick it up. And then once you've picked it up, you have some instructions on what the controls are. Now, I know for certain people this is going to be sort of immersion breaking and annoying, so I'm probably going to make a global toggle so that you can turn these sort of tool tips on and off. But especially for folks who haven't necessarily gotten to play around with this stuff a lot, I figured it would be useful on the way to having a demo to have these instructions embedded directly in. As you might have just heard, all of the objects in the environment now actually have some sounds for their collisions and such. Um, in addition to, oops, actually I have to use a slide here. Wonderful. So yeah, so that's been fun to do. Let's see here. Um, oh, I wanted to mention, uh, so, someone on, on Reddit mentioned that I had one aspect of the handgun's operation um, inaccurate last week, which is that if I have a round chambered and then pull the magazine out, after firing the slide shouldn't lock back. And so that's been fixed, thanks to you. Um, additionally, the little change with the shotgun, actually two changes with the uh, with the shotgun. For one, the, the lever release on the back for the break open animates correctly. And shells, as you can see, go in much easier. I basically switched from a mesh collider to a capsule collider. So it does clip through a little bit, but it makes the process. You can strip them in and out much, much, oops, there we go, much faster if you're not fumbling. Wonderful. So that's in. And now the coolest thing, which has been hiding behind me, is the third object that I've added, which is my Junkyard Graviton Beamer. Basically my love letter to the gravity gun from Half-Life. Basically built out of a corroded car battery, some sci-fi capacitors, a crappy power box, and whatever this does. So, got some physics joints on the end of there. Um, and this was to basically be the first object for me to test some two-hand interactions, as well as having a tool for grabbing objects outside of the tracked range. So we can, we've got a power capacitor and, I don't know, but it's radioactive label there. And we can flip these switches and turn it on. We basically get our gravity bubble here. We can use the forward lever and pull it closer to us. We'll push it further away. And then we can pull the trigger. Grab a bunch of objects. And fire them up. Firing it sort of blows out the capacitor or uses it up. And so we have to set that back on. Pull that over here. It can 
grab up to five to six objects. I set a limit because past that, the Unity callbacks for on trigger stay start misbehaving. Looks like the pivot point on that's a little strange. We'll have to fix that. Snap that back on. So yeah. So yeah, so that's the update for this week. Um, over the next week, I'm probably going to be taking a whole bunch of the janky sort of display tooltip code that I've written into these individual objects and trying to create something a little more generalized. Um, obviously, just having them appear all the time is kind of silly. So I need to figure out some way behaviorally to have them come in when they should and then disappear. Uh, and then beyond that, I'm going to start actually working on a slightly more compelling environment to actually start shooting things in, as well as working on a couple more just sort of general virtual objects, like having a knife you can throw, etc. So yeah, so thanks for taking a look, and uh, I'll have more next week. Peace.